Hey, what's up? Welcome to another episode and another book review. So this review is on another book that I read very recently. Okay, actually I did listen to this one as an audiobook, but you know, it still counts. So the book that I'm talking about is called You're Not Listening by Kate Murphy. So in this book, Kate, who is a journalist, explains what listening truly is, what it isn't, and also how important it is to our connection with ourselves and others. So when was the last time you listened to someone? Like really listened? without thinking about what you wanted to say next or glancing down at your phone or jumping in to offer your opinion. In modern life, we're encouraged to listen to our hearts, our inner voices and our guts, but really are we encouraged to listen carefully and with intent to other people? Instead, we seem to be engaged in a dialogue of the deaf, talking over one another at parties or work meetings or even family dinners. Online and in person, it is all about defining yourself and shaping your narrative. Value is placed on what you project and not what you absorb. And yet, listening is arguably more valuable than speaking. It is fundamental to any relationship, be it personal, professional, or political. I must say, this was an amazing book. But unfortunately, it wasn't really structured in such a way that you get clear and concise points to take away, which made planning this review a little difficult. The book is more of a continuation of the main key message, which is that we do not listen and that it is something that we can learn to do. So the following three key takeaways are more just points from the book that struck me for one reason or another. While there was a lot of practical advice for these points, I will add in my own thoughts for how I plan to improve in these areas. The first key takeaway is the closeness communication bias. So in the book, uh, Kate talks about how despite what we may think, we actually have a harder time listening to the people closest to us than we do listening to a stranger. This is because with knowing someone comes this mindset that we actually think we already know what the other person is going to say. And so we replace the listening with our own assumptions. This is what we call the closeness communication bias. So listening to people who are not close to us does bring a different set of biases. Uh, but they too are rooted in these false assumptions. These are most commonly confirmation bias and expectancy bias. Now this is because in order to make sense of the world, we unconsciously create file structures in our head, which we drop people into. <laughs> this is often before they've even started talking. These categories are often broad stereotypes that are influenced by culture or more specific based on our own perspective and experience. These categories can actually be helpful in some instances, uh, but if we're not careful, our rush to categorize people can actually affect our ability to understand and actually distorts our reality. So this is where your own self-awareness comes in. By being aware of our own tendency to want to jump to categorizing someone before they've even opened their mouth, as well as knowing what kinds of things tend to hijack your attention and cloud your perception, will help you to become a better listener. Now the second key takeaway is what words conceal and silences reveal. So in most Western cultures, people are extremely uncomfortable with silences and they often jump to respond at the slightest indication that a speaker might be trailing off, even if the person hasn't quite completed a thought. So how do we balance planning what to say next and listening to the person talking? This is something that I often ponder, but it is usually the case that a better response will actually come to you once you have taken in all that the other person has, had, has to say and not make assumptions. By taking a second to pause after the other person concludes before you speak shows that you are actually listening. If you do need a little bit more time, it's actually okay to say that you'd like to think about it. What this does is it conveys that you are honoring what the other person has said by taking the time to think about it, but at the same time, you are also honoring that part of you that needs more time to process. The third key takeaway is when to stop listening. Okay, I know this point sounds a little counterintuitive given that the whole book is about listening, uh, but sometimes you need to make the call when to stop listening. This is because careful listening is draining. Regardless of your personality or attitude or motivation, you can't do it continuously. I often find myself trying to listen to someone while my attention is divided. Like, I might be talking on the phone while driving hands-free of course, or while preparing dinner. Now this in part is due to my total inability to just sit still and listen, but it is also hard to tell someone that you can't listen right now, that what they have to say 
isn't your top priority. But part of being a good listener is also knowing your limits and setting boundaries and not listening because you don't have the time or energy at the moment only makes you human. It is better to let someone know that you are unable to listen rather than just pretend that you are because they will likely be able to tell. That said, just as you should be mindful and intentional when you give your attention, you should also try to be just as mindful and intentional when you withhold it. Now to wrap up this review, I really enjoyed the balance of informative research and the relatable text that made the book both engaging and thought provoking at the same time. It certainly did make me consider my own listening abilities and how these can be improved upon. What I did really appreciate was that Kate emphasizes that listening is a skill that is learned through implementation and practice and you actually have to get outside of your own head in order to do this. Here is a closing quote from the book. It takes awareness, focus and experience to unearth and understand what is really being communicated. Good listeners are not born that way, they become that way. So also just a little side note uh, for my viewers who are part of the OPS community and want to improve their typing skills, the content of this book is actually incredibly relevant and incredibly useful to help you get better at typing. So I would suggest that you check it out if this is what you are aiming for. So thank you very much for watching guys and if you do like this review please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you have any questions let me know in the comments too. Um, thanks and see you next time.